peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Today we are reading. Uh, today with the big parents are not here. Big, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Joshua not here. He's not here. Pastor Joshua is not here. Doctor H K is not here. All the creator staff are not here. That's why we shall share the word of God today. I, I'm under a little bit of pressure because it's still recorded, right? So facing God, I'm not just going to talk nonsense. So today we are on Second uh, Samuel chapter five. We have Pastor Barnabas sharing. It's an exciting uh, chapter. Finally, David was king. So the title for today is David arose and became king and became king. David had waited for a long, long time. Since when he was a teen, he was anointed by Samuel to be king. Starting from that, his disaster had not ended all the time until today. This chapter, finally, he was king over Israel and Judah. How was he being made king? What condition did he have? That's why he was made king. David's uh, dynasty was special because, was special because David, uh, King uh, Lord Jesus, was to sit on the uh, throne of David and establish this with justice and righteousness forever. David's dynasty, the measuring stick of the David's kingdom was. So David's kingdom was like a is like a measuring stick to measure all the kings of Israel. Do they uh, did they walk in the way of David? Then if they did, they would be considered as like walking in the way of God. So this chapter was is very precious to us. I want to divide it into few paragraphs. Verse one to five, the first paragraph. David became became king over a soul uh, over Israel and Judah. The second paragraph, six and to seven, uh, to ten. Sorry, six to ten. So David took over Jerusalem from the hand of Jebusites. And then with verse 11 to 16, the third paragraph, that Hiram, king of Tyre, uh, built uh, David a house. And then briefly talk about the sons that who were born to David in Jerusalem. Last paragraph is 17 to 25. How David defeated the Philistines. Twice he defeated the Philistines. And every time he listened to the word of God. He had different strategies. Now we come back to verse 1. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. Verse 1. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, shall be ruler over Israel. So the elders of Israel 
mentioned three reasons why David should be king over Israel. The first one, you, you, we are your bone and your uh, flesh. That's the first one. We are of one ancestor. That's Abraham, Isaac, and uh, Jacob. They were of one uh, descent, uh, one ascent ancestors. So naturally, you should become king. And also, in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the third reason, and the Lord said, you shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over Israel. Three reasons here, and these three reasons are legitimate. The first one, uh, we are born in flesh, and in time past, you were leading us anyway. And the third point, and you have promised from the prophets, David had been waiting for this for ages, for a long, long time. In verse 5, in Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. The, house was di uh, the, the whole nation was divided into house of Judah and house of Israel. So 11 tribes, uh, 10 tribes, and then the two tribes in the house of Judah. So that the nation was divided. All the reasons were there anyway, but it did not mean that immediately David could be king. It didn't mean that. Actually, David had waited for a long time because it, uh, they, a soul had died for seven years and six months. I want to show you a picture. Judah and Simeon um, with the ten tribes in the north were divided. And they were trying to fight for powers. If we turn to First Samuel, we know. So remember Abner and Isbosheth. There were lots of tensions there. It's not just really naturally very smooth. It didn't go very naturally or smoothly. And then here, uh, they anoint David king over Israel. Here, in verse 3, they anointed David king over Israel. It means the over the ten tribes of Israel. Because in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. That's verse 5. So obviously, so, uh, it's different here. The Israel doesn't mean the all Israel. David had been anointed three times. The first time by prophet Samuel. He was anointed. I, he, was, he was a teenager, maybe around 15 to 16 years old. And he started his uh, disaster. He killed Goliath, but Saul didn't like him. Instead, uh, Saul envied him, tried every way to kill him persecuted him and uh, sought his life. And to a point that so actually killed all the priests. So it was not easy for David at all. He was anointed the second time at Hebron. The house of Judah on, uh, anointed him king over the house of Judah. After he had been anointed three times, uh, there is one special quality of David. The quality was he was a, his life was passive. 
He took uh, the throne not by his flesh, not by violence. He feared God because he honored the Lord's anointed one. He never killed. Uh, even though the, the Lord's anointed one was the one who tried to take his life, he still honored him. Twice he had chance to kill Saul, yet he did not lay the hand on him. He did not uh, try to take the throne by all means possible. No. David was someone who waited on God to move. He was in a resting mode. He was in this peaceful mode. So step by step, he took on the throne. He has strong confidence on God's calling. Can you imagine? God gave you a calling. Then you will take the initiative proactively trying to accomplish that, right? You may help God to accomplish that calling over your life. I need to speed up. I need to, uh, you know, do not waste any time. I need to redeem my time. Be quite, quite, quick. It's out of human flesh. When you face difficulty, how to overcome the difficulties? Maybe you were despised or even rejected by authority. Can you continue to stay in submission? Or you say, okay, I will go somewhere else. <laughs> I can always go to somewhere else. You, you know, it's all about this authority. You know, she's trying to stop the work of God, so I need to go somewhere else. But David never did that. Totally, completely, utterly, he feared God in every way possible. So passively, he wait on God to move. This is very important. The Bible tells us that Lord Jesus will sit on the throne of David. And uh, his kingdom will be, he shall rule his kingdom by righteousness and justice, and it shall last forever. So Jesus will use the throne of David. This throne must be established upon justice and righteousness. There should be no there should be nothing displeasing to God in the foundation. Because it must be of the justice and righteousness. So you can see that when David was anointed three times, God has set really high standard on David because the temptation was great. Yes, David had the chance twice to kill the person who persecuted him all this time. But he didn't. He didn't lay the hand. He continued to submit. Possibly he didn't know that his throne would last forever and then the, the Messiah, Lord Jesus, would sit on his throne. He didn't know that, David. But what did he see? He saw that at his cousin present situation that he was persecuted. It also tells us, brothers and sisters and co-workers, maybe in your life, you have been treated unfairly. You have faced. Uh, you have been treated unjust. You face uh, injustice and right unrighteousness. But during this process, 
you need to learn to exercise in faith. You must trust that God's ways is always the best. You wait on God to move. Do not be rushed or take matter into your hand and try to do it your your way. God wants to use you, just like God wants to use wanted to use David. Many things happen in his life. He didn't know that his throne would be so great in the future. So to us today, if you face a lot of hardship, difficulties, persecution, those that are not of your fault, I believe that God wants to use it, just like God used David. You know, there are many, there were many, many kings in Israel afterwards, especially in the Northern Kingdom. Many kings that try to take their throne, try to kill the people, kill the king on on uh, in office. There was a king in Israel. His name was Simri, and he was only king for seven days. Just seven days, he took the throne by himself. Yeah, he reached the destiny quickly. He must be good at his martial art. <laughs> he had a certain power, status, and army forces. He took the kingship quickly. Yet quickly. He was being killed as well. Uh, if we want to be used by God, the first thing we must walk in the will of God and walk in God's timetable. What should we practice? We must have faith in our calling. The second thing, we must exercise to wait on God. When we wait on God, our anger, our emotion can be quieted down. And overcome our fear. I had some experience of waiting on God. It was really, really hard for me. So I was so busy, so busy, and suddenly I need to quiet down and tell myself that I need to wait on God for half an hour. But just less than ten minutes, I still turn. I would just go to my watch, and then I was like all agitated, and then it's like I got itchy bum. I couldn't sit still. So I set a timer, thirty minutes. So thirty minutes, I will not watch. Um, go to my watch. But I have all these chaotic, uh, confusing thoughts. So A told me this, B told me that. And then I need to do A B C. And then I want to do it with my hands straight away. So the next time I say, okay, I would finish A B C D E, then come wait on God. But even though I sat down, then my my mind gone miles. Away. So when I had this last four forty, and I saw a lot of pretty women, that's what happened. Yes, it's something really hard. We must learn to be like uh, to have that rest of David. In this rest, you go into the will of God. That's righteousness and justice. And it's how we can. Uh, that's the secret how to last long. Do you want the work last forever, and that your ministry will be of value? What you do to others will be of everlasting value. We must learn from the life of David. At rest, at peace, and wait on God. Being anointed three times. That's his. Um, that's David. His life as a king. The second paragraph. 
喺當中咧係、呃啊、要首先前面講到咧，亦都要佢要得到咧誒、啊、百姓嘅。And also he need to gain the approval from the people。一個嘅一個嘅角度咧，必須要。For kingdom you need people, right？ 所以你會睇到咧，大衛呢一個嘅生命咧，正係一個嘅。So the life of David was able to gather people together because he was at peace, at rest, and he walked in the will of God, justice and righteousness. He was able to gather the divided tribes together. People see in his life that he did not just try to do everything by his、uh, hand. He he treated the house of Saul kindly. And he was he showed grace to Jonathan's son、uh, Mephibosheth. 所以，啊，大卫嘅呢一个嘅君王嘅恩膏咧，就系一个嘅招。The anointing of David is to, uh, gather people together. And the second thing, he also had the anointing to possess the land. 你会睇到咧，大卫咧同埋跟随佢嘅人咧，到咗耶路撒冷就攻打耶路斯。And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land. Who spoke to David, saying, "You shall not come in here, but the blind and the lame will repel you, thinking David cannot come in here." I don't understand here. The blind and the lame will repel you. What does that mean? They were the Jebusites were saying that there are blind, the blind and the lame here, and even with them, you cannot defeat them. You cannot defeat even the blind and the lame. That's why you cannot come in here. That's the thought of Jebusites, despising David. 有一點點不太滿意這個答案。我於是乎咧，就去查啦，去查啦，查啦。查去查。咁又揾到一啲嘅誒，一啲嘅拉比嘅一啲嘅。Some a rabbi will have traditional a translation on this one。就話咧，原來咧，佢話喺耶布斯人嘅裏邊咧，佢有一個嘅有有兩個嘅。In the for the Jebusites, there were two idols. 一個嘅偶像咧，一個盒子。One was the lame, one was the the blind. Very special. 原來咧，呢一個咧，佢話一個咧。The blind was Isaac. The lame was Jacob. Jacob, when he was old, he was blind. And Israel, Isaac, when he was old, he was blind. And then Jacob, because he wrestled with God, that's why he was lame. So that's why they, the Jews have put two、uh, idols: the blind and the blind. Because we have the two idols, you know, the blind and the lame, which represent Jacob and Isaac. And yet, nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. That's verse seven. So here, the stronghold of Zion. It's called Zion here. There were some strongholds in Zion. So David took the stronghold of Zion and called it the city of David. Until today, so even now Jerusalem was is called the city of the great king. And then David said, "On that day, whoever climbs up by way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, the lame and the blind, who are hated by David's soul." 啊！呢一度咧，喺其實喺啊呢一個嘅嗯歷代志上嘅裏邊咧，有同一。In First Chronicles, the same event was recorded. 就係咧，邊一個咧？其實。So at the end, it was Joab who was able to defeat it and took it. So Joab will respond to David's calling. 
and defeated and took Jerusalem. So there was this uh, water dog. So through this water duck, they were able to defeat it, defeat uh, uh, Jerusalem, then took over Jerusalem. From this map, uh, Kidron Valley. Can you see Kidron Valley? Water shaft, and there is the water shaft. So water shaft all the way to Jerusalem. Mellow, Milo on the north. It's not the chocolate drink of Malay, the Malaysian chocolate drink. So here, Milo. He built, David built all around from the Milo and inward. It's not a special name here. Next slide. So there was a wall here. So that, that, that wall is called Milo. It was built by Jebusites. Above that, there were houses built on top of Milo. So they were built all around from the Milo and inward. That's why it's called the stronghold of Zion, the city of David. Step by step, David built his uh, capital. He dwelt there and he built his house. So David went on and became great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Verse 10. So here we talk about the lame and the blind. Uh, verse 8, uh, the lame and the blind shall not come into the house. So it means the, ho the house of God. That's the house of God, verse 8. But when Jesus Christ sits on the throne of David and become king forever, so Jesus went into Jerusalem and started to heal people. When John the Baptist was kept in prison, he sent some of his disciples to uh, Jesus and said, Are you the one we have been waiting for? Are you the one? And Jesus said, Go and tell John what you have seen, what you have heard. The blind sees, the lame walks. The leprosy will be healed. The dead will be raised, and the poor will be will hear the gospel. So these people are not shall not come in the house. But when Jesus sat on the throne of David. He healed the blind, and then he, he, the blind can see and the lame can walk. So he grew stronger. He became great. So David built it, and then Jesus continued on that foundation. It's like um, we continue to, and then uh, God is in our midst, and He continues to work through the work of the Holy Spirit. And God continues to work in our midst. God wants us to possess the land so that God's uh, ruling shall come upon this place. 
So the uh, the reign of God shall come upon this because the, there should not be the blind, the lame, the deaf, the mute, the dead, or the lepro uh, leprotic. And there should not be the poor. But when Jesus comes, the blind sees, the lame uh, walks, the deaf hears, the dead uh, lives, the sick healed, the poor shall hear the gospel. So here it shows us a future prospect. What do we learn from here? Do not despise what you are doing with your hand. You don't know what will God will do in the midst of it. When the Holy Spirit works in the uh, work, move in the work you do, a lot of um, miracles will shall happen. Don't think that my testimony is nothing. There are many more great things happening in 611. When I first came to 611, and then uh, Pastor Deborah saying that, you know, your testimony is like uh, opening the can. It's bland because it's canned food. But after a certain time, as the Holy Spirit worked in my life, works in my life, my testimony is all different. I believe that it will be the same for all brothers and sisters. When the Holy Spirit comes, God will use you. Possess the land. Verse 11 to 16, then the Hiram, Hiram, king of Tyra, sent messages to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David a house. So David knew that the Lord has established him as king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Even the Gentiles paid tribute to David. Then David understood that, yes, the Lord had established him king as king over Israel. Not just king over Judah or the king over the uh, ten tribes, but the, whole, the people of God. The twelve tribes arose to be. Uh, he will be king over the twelve tribes and prospered the kingdom. It, it looks like doesn't doesn't it look like the kingdom of God? Just like the kingdom of God. One day Gentiles will rise and praise God and say that those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tell turn to your neighbor. That's Gentile. And I am a Gentile. We are those people. The knowledge of God's uh, glory shall fill the water, just like the just like the oceans fills the earth. This glory must come. This is only a picture. And gradually, this picture shall grow, shall grow, just like a tree of life. It will definitely grow. People will be saved, will be healed. The dead will rise. The Gentiles hear the news and they shall worship God. And God knew that, uh, David knew that God will use him as king over Israel. Verse 13 to 16, uh, we'll come back to 13 to 16 later. 17 to 25. Uh, David continued to defeat his enemy, continued to battle, 
I can continue to battle. We show you the last slide, slide so that you may understand better. So when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David, and David heard of it and went down to this stronghold. So we think that the stronghold is the uh, city of David, but it's not here. From Jerusalem, he went down to Cave Adullam, and that's his stronghold. That's where he arose. That's where the mighty man of David arose. And priests went to him, the anointing of prophets and king uh, accumulated, uh, all came to him. The Philistines start to attack him. So they were scattered in the Ephraim Valley. So the that's where the valley of uh, the giants. That's where David uh, battled with them. So David, in his distress, in his hardship, he learned one thing. Besides waiting on God in faith, he learned to inquire of the Lord in all things. It's also a reminder for us. We must inquire of the Lord in all things. Is it easy to seek God in uh, bad times? In troubled times, it's not easy. But in good times, you are king. You want to seek the Lord. That requires a, a life. How do you have such a life to depend on God even when you are in good times? It was trained up during the trouble times. So brothers and sisters, do not, do not despise trouble times, hardship. Hardship is the work of God in your life. You think the habits of David will just come naturally? No. Otherwise, then Saul will have the same thing, right? But Saul never had such a life. When Saul was afraid, he will pay. He will uh, brought the offering himself. When Saul was afraid, he went to medium. When Saul was afraid, he tried to kill David. When Saul was uh, was afraid, he forgot uh, the work of the. Uh, the word of God to him that he was to destroy the Philistines because he did not build a, a habit. This is very important. When we are not uh, in that position yet, we must build up good and godly habits. Uh, we always have a right thinking and then we have a right living. Right thinking will bring right living. So for David, he always inquired of the Lord in all things. That's why the Lord God is with, was with him. Verse 20, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. It's like the toilet. You go to the toilet and then you flush it and then all the enemies gone or flushed away. So the enemy continued to pursue them, went up again, and then David inquired of the Lord again, verse 23. Does it require a good life after winning the battle? You know, you will be puffed up, right, naturally. It's okay, I'm fine. Oh, this is just a piece of cake, no worries. Then he may despise his enemy, but David did not. 
He continued to inquire of the Lord on this matter. And God gave him the second strategy. So in our ministry, if we have done something right, we continue on that, right? Okay, this is good. This is the right way to do it. We continue to do it. But we didn't think that, you know, in different battles, we have different strategies. God gave him another strategy here. There will be sound of marching in the tops of mulberry trees. It could be angel, or it could be the Holy Spirit. So he listened to God and followed suits. So he continued to attack, strike the camp of the Philistines. So from uh, Giba as far as Giza. So from Giba all the way to Giza, those cities were Philistine cities. So David cast drove all the Philistine back to their own land. So the land of Benjamin will be released. It was good, wasn't it? May God help us. Together we reign with Christ, all of us. But how how come your work can have everlasting value? We must wait on God. We must wait on God. And seek God in all things. Do not be proud. And there were two things here. The first one, verse 13 to 16. David took some more uh, more concubines and wives, and then um, he had more sons and daughters. Nine sons were born to him in Jerusalem. Uh, Eleven. Eleven sons were born to him in Jerusalem, including six in Hebron. In total, he had 19 sons and daughters from, the, from his wife, excluding uh, sons born to him from uh, concubines. It's countless, but this is not pleasing to the Lord because the Bible tells us that in Deuteronomy, that the king should not take uh, many wives and concubines for himself, lest they will be uh, led astray. That was happened. It happens to Solomon. Because of this, then the house of the whole nations is divided. That the house of Judah, house of Benjamin, became the um, the nations of Judah, and the other ten become nations of Israel. The second thing was. Verse 21. They left their images there, and David and his men carried them away. It's very special here. When you read chapter uh, verse 6, and the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusite. It's done by the king, permitted by God. That's the blessing of God. They possess the land. And they were able to take uh, Jerusalem. But here is David. It doesn't say king and his men. 
22 and 21. David and his men, and not just the king and his men. What did they do? They carried the images away. It's a bit ambiguous about carrying away. It's a broad sense. Basically, it's to lift up those uh, images, lift up the images. But in First Chronicles, um, it's recorded that David called, told his men to burn up all the images. But as David and his men lift up those images, there's something happened. So they lift up the images like a trophy. It's like exalted the people. Oh, we we have won the battle. We have won the battle. They become proud. So here is um, when the king won the battle. Maybe they won the battle, they will sin. That's why um, one of the reasons why David had a lot of uh, concubines and wives, not just because David loved women. It's some alliance between nations, intermarriages to expand their power. It's like diplomatic strategy so that the nations can be uh, established, more people pay tribute to them. So we can see the shadow of men here. We lift up our trophy, they will be proud. Through diplomacy, they strengthen their own nations. God is also telling us that we be careful of using too much of our own power. We must pay attention how we win the battle. In First and Second Samuel. In Hebrew, it's just one book, Book of Samuel. It's not divided into one and two. There are some teaching for the people in captivity. And one of them was God is the highest. God lifts up uh, the needy from the ash heaps so that they may be seated with the prince. Psalm 100. And, uh, yeah. and the second one, God protects his holy people's footsteps. And the third thing, we cannot win by power. Man cannot win by power. Man cannot win by power. I believe that in chapter 5, we can see that we have ever, if we want to have everlasting value in God's kingdom, besides seeking God in everything, I inquire of the Lord, and be careful if we rely on our own strength in our life, rely on our own strength, our resources, our network. Maybe we win the battle, we are proud. We use our man's ways and we think that it's going to uh, expand the kingdom of God. We need to pay attention to this and we need to pray. God will tell us. Let's worship our God. That's the end of the message today.